This might be one of the most interesting, disturbing, and puzzling stories to come along in a long time. In early 2007, the news broke that beekeepers across the United States had made a surprising discovery. Bees are mysteriously dying. It's called colony collapse disorder. Beekeepers in 27 states report disappearing honeybees. Pollination by bees produces 30% of our food. Congress is holding hearings, even the vice president has been briefed. The end of honeybees, the end of pollination, a dire threat to crops the world over. Today, what's happening to the bees and what's really at stake? began with these bees at Dave Hackenberg's bee farm, ground zero for the mystery of the missing bees. In November of 2006, Dave Hackenberg discovered that nearly all of the 400 beehives in his Florida bee yard were empty. So this is what you call a dead hive? Yep, empty box, no bees. The veteran beekeeper had seen bees die before, but never like this. I keep asking myself, what am I doing wrong? I mean, it's, it's a, it's a mind-boggling thing. I mean, it really is a mind-boggling thing. Hackenberg contacted scientists at Pennsylvania State University. They were intrigued by the beekeeper's story. And I said, well, bring up some bees and we'll check it out. And so, indeed, he brought up some bees and those bees got sampled and we found all these things I couldn't explain and I didn't understand and certainly nothing popped out. And then it became apparent that this was happening in different parts of the country. Van Engelsdorp helped give the die-off a name, Colony Collapse Disorder, or CCD. Suddenly, bees were big news. The population of honeybees down roughly 25% across this country. It's a simple equation. Without bees to pollinate many plants, the plants just don't grow. The fear is most of the honeybees will be dead. We have to do something. All the bees are dying. Oh, no, no bees. Colony collapse disorder. The mystery fascinated the public, and strange explanations soon began to spread. Do you buy that this could be a Russian plot? Not really. The rapture, God calling all the bees back to heaven? Uh, I don't think he needs him up there. But much of the television coverage missed an important bit of backstory. Beekeepers had been struggling to maintain their hives ever since the 1980s, when the invasive Varroa mite arrived in the U.S. We have a saying, before Varroa mite, you could be a bee haver. After Varroa mite, you had to be a beekeeper because you had to manage your bees. Varroa mites infest and slowly weaken colonies, but Hackenberg's CCD losses came quickly to colonies that appeared healthy. A number of us thought that we may be dealing with a new pathogen, a novel pathogen. So if we could find that novel pathogen, let's say a virus or something, then that might explain, that was the missing link. The only thing we could say about CCDBs, and it was a very distinct thing, was they were really sick. They sort of had every disease going. One theory was that stress was making bees sick. To meet the growing pollination demands of large-scale agriculture, commercial beekeepers truck their bees from state to state to pollinate crop after crop. Some of us are running these bees to two, three, four crops a year pollinating, and so the they don't get a chance to ever get rejuvenated. And it used to be you could get them onto some clean food for two or three weeks and away they go. But pasture land in general is running out because of land being turned into cropland and so we're running out of places to go with the bees. More crops mean more pesticides and many beekeepers have blamed CCD on neonicotinoids widely used chemicals that are absorbed by plants and can accumulate in pollen and nectar. The European Union voted to suspend the use of neonicotinoids because of possible links to bee collapse. The EPA is reviewing these pesticides, but a direct link to CCD has not been established. Indeed, most scientists now believe that no single factor can fully explain the phenomenon probably dealing with multiple factors coming together to cause a set of symptoms that we call CCD. Personally, I fall back to nutritional stress and maybe pesticide stress leading to pathogen outbreak, I'll call it. And so the pathogen or the types of pathogens that are there don't really matter that much, but the bees are in a weakened state and that allows these pathogens to, to multiply and cause, cause the bees to die. Bees have this behavior called altruistic suicide. 
What happens is that the bee somehow knows she's sick, flies away from the hive so she doesn't infect her nestmates. And so we think that explains this behavior of collapse, why we're not finding dead bees and why we see this quick spiral down in the population. In South America right now and moving north toward North America, there's a new strain of bees. Colony collapse was not the first time bees had captured the public's attention. This is the African killer bee in the last four years responsible for the deaths of hundreds of people in South America. In the 1970s, fears over the spread of Africanized honeybees gave bees a bad name. That's right, gringo, the killer bees. But since the onset of colony collapse disorder, bees have become a symbol of environmental protection. If you couldn't understand that they were singing all we are saying, give bees a chance. When people saw the bees, they said, aha, uh -huh, here's something that I can really do something significant. You could save the bees by actually getting some bees. Hobby beekeeper Jim Fisher keeps about two dozen beehives on Manhattan rooftops. They call it urban beekeeping, and it's getting a ton of buzz. Pre-media blitz, pure pre-CCD, beekeeping was a hobby taken up by retired white blue collar guys for the most part. The demographic immediately became a lot younger, a lot more female. They got a good home, they got lots of comb. Well, before I started, I, I was nervous because of all the diseases, but it, as a community across the country, we're eventually gonna figure it out. And it, being part of that process, I think is for the common good. There's been a couple of silver linings on the CCD story. One is just public awareness about the role that pollinators play in their food supply. It's also brought new researchers from other areas. Scientists are attaching tiny backpacks to honeybees in order to study them. In 2014, scientists used radio frequency ID tags to track bees to help better understand the causes of colony collapse disorder. At Harvard University, scientists took a different approach. They've engineered the robo-bee to possibly assist with crop pollination. The U.S. Department of Agriculture has also approved a vaccine for bees, the first ever vaccine for any insect, to protect against one pathogen known to decimate bee colonies. The bee world is buzzing right now. Scientists have created a vaccine that protects honeybees from American fallon brood, which is a type of fatal bacterial disease that can spread quickly from hive to hive. A huge threat to the food supply. Cases of colony collapse disorder have declined substantially. And while dire predictions of falling bee populations leading to a food crisis have not come to pass, honeybee colonies continue to die off in large numbers. We're still losing a lot of colonies. And that can be for a variety of reasons. Parasitic varroa mite, pesticide exposure, poor nutrition, nutritional stress, and in particular, we've been seeing a lot of queen loss. There's a multitude of things that beekeepers are facing to try to keep colonies alive. All of this means that beekeepers have to work harder than ever, like dividing their hives and buying new queens in order to keep the bee population steady. Thanks to efforts like these, there are just as many honeybee colonies in the U.S. today as there were in 2006. We are not worried at all that bees are going to go extinct in this country or in the world. What we're worried about is that will we have the beekeepers? It's not the basic beekeeping that I remember as a kid and as a young guy running bees, you know. It, it's, there's a, just a whole lot of things have changed. There's lots of days that I would like to pull the plug, you know, and just walk away. But I like what I'm doing. I mean, you know, it's something that gets in your system and doesn't go away.